What's good? It's your boy D, Skinny P, coming at you from the Highlighted Compound. This episode, we're gonna go in depth on everything you need to know about keeping Panther Chameleon in a nutshell. We're gonna go into how you set up a cage, how you put the Mist King nozzle on, whether you should use the automatic mister or not, live plants or fake plants, how to set up a chameleon rack with everything you need in there, the drainage, the mister, the cage, the lights. We go into lighting, you know, the heat lamp, the UVB, the T5 or T8. She use a fluorescent light, all that good stuff. And Skinny P here will be building the cave. You gotta see how he does it himself. Coming at you with another one. All right, hey, let's go to the warehouse. All right, right here, we have the chameleon rack. But you wanna make your life easier, especially the more chameleons you get, so the more time it takes to clean and take care of them. So you wanna do everything to make your life easier. This is basically a baker's rack. You can get these at Home Depot. Everything is done strategically. Underneath here, we have your Miss King. The Miss King is the automated mister. This is the, the starter size, the smaller one. Uh, this is all you need. You can run up to about 10 cages. This is all you need if you're just you have just a couple cans. This is your reservoir. Fill it up with um, those jugs of brittle water. Fill this up with that water. Why? Is because if you don't and you use just regular tap water, the misting nozzles are gonna get clogged up and calcified. And instead of a really nice fine mist, they're gonna it's gonna either get blocked or come out really really crappy. So you know we always recommend using RO water or Brita filter water in your water reservoir. And as you can tell, this rack right here is on wheels, on casters. You definitely want to put your rack system on casters right here. Obviously move this anywhere, whether in your house, your garage, your shop. It's the little things after doing trial and error. You learn little tricks that make your life a little easier. This rack right here is for the drainage. So right here, you just look. These will fill up with water eventually from the misting. Instead of going all over the floor, it'll drain up in here. When it fills up, on the wet dry back, little five gallon bucket you get at Home Depot. Stick this on there, and then you can turn on. It makes cleaning really easy because if you had it sitting on top of the drainage tray, you have to pick the cage out and pull the tray out, and it's just a lot of moving parts. And I can tell you, you will love having your own drainage shelf. These are actually the ones that come with the dragon strand cages. But, you know, if you wanted to build these, you definitely could. And it's built like this, where if you had it sitting on top, the cage would sit on these uh, rises right here. So, and the water would just drain in here. But doing it like this, really easy to clean. This right here is a large Zoom Ed Repti Breeze, 18 by 18 by 36 inches tall. I'll put dividers on here out of plastic, corrugated plastic. And I would put it on the back side, the left side, and the right side. One, it keeps humidity in. Two, it blocks out any visual stresses that might stress the chameleon out. Three, if you have cams, say on this side, or even on this side, it prevents anything harmful from that could go airborne to transfer from one cage to another. On this side, we have a Dragon Strand Breeder Series. These are like the high-end chameleon cages. Well made. This is actually version one. They have an updated style that you know, I think is a really big improvement on top of these. Same height, 36 inches. And if you look up here, we have the uh, automated mister connected up here. Look from one cage to the other. And that's down here, straight down to the Miss King. And as for this power strip, you know, you just zip tie this to your rack, make everything one unit, um, so you can plug everything in right here. This is a really big, important part of chameleons, but lights, I get so many questions about what type of lights, what should I use? So I'm gonna show you right now. So right here we have the Arcadia LED Jungle Dawns. Basically LED lights, super bright, and they also produce UVA, so if you use live plants, these will help the plant grow and this is what they need. I'll go into detail later about real plants or fake plants. And in the middle, 
up here. This is uh, Arcadia. So if you ever hear about Arcadia, they're basically like the top of the line type of lights. And this line right here is a T5. You can see the bulb is more thin. So the difference between a T5 and a T8 is that a T5, it'll penetrate deeper in the cage so the chameleon can reach the UVB levels it need. Chameleons need UVB in addition to supplements like calcium plus D3. They need that D3 in order to process the UVB that they need or they can get MVD, metabolic bone disease. Their arms and legs look like any spaghetti. You don't want that. So these are the 6% UVB light. If you're gonna go the T8s, they're thicker like this. They don't penetrate as far, so you want to go with the 12% UVB with the T8. So we have the LED, the UVB, and then in the back, we have our Altair heat source. I always recommend putting a, a 50 watt. Definitely don't go over 100 watts. It really depends how wide the cage is. You know, the bigger the cage, the higher the wattage, but at the same time, you have to make sure that the higher the wattage, you have to raise the lights higher because Millions can't feel when they burn themselves. So if they're cold, they just go huddle up by the light. If they're climb on the screen, so make sure you know your light is six inches from the top of the chameleon. Be between about three and five inches tall body-wise. So you gotta take that into consideration when you're putting your heat lamp. So these right here are 50 watt. As you can see, the lights have their own shelf. It would be easier and more accessible when you drain out the drainage tray. With these lights, if you have to clean the cage for whatever reason, the lights are also on the stone rack, so you don't have to take the lights off, the UVB light, the heat lamp, and then take the cage out, you know, keep the light somewhere, and then put it back in. This way you just take the cage out, boom. Clean it, beam it, put it back in. Another factor that you guys are gonna want to take into consideration is airflow. You don't want stagnant air in the room, which means there's no air motion in the room which can cause a respiratory, uh, but also you don't want direct airflow from like a fan or an open sliding door or a window directly aimed at them, because that could also cause a respiratory. So you're always trying to find that middle ground. You want, you know, a fan in the room, not facing the cage, rotating so there's airflow. If it's in a closed room, you know, you want maybe the window to be cracked a little bit for maybe 15 minutes a day or something. If you do have a fan in the room and you don't want it to oscillate, you can also have it pointing at the ceiling. So it'll hit the ceiling and then come back down and that's fine. So you just don't want stagnant air or direct air for the goal to not get a respiratory and it's so easy to get it. So make sure you take that into consideration. Caging, you can technically, this is a 48 inch wide by 18 inches deep baker's rack. If you wanted to do even a small breeding project with this rack, you can put say your male here, your one to three females. Recommend not putting more three sisters together in one cage. Definitely don't mix your girls, different locales or different lines. You got male breeder here, female breeder or breeders over here. And then down here, this is actually 16 inches tall. So you can put some small Zoomed Repti Breeze, 16 by 16 by 20 inch cages. You put about three of them. So you have spots for the babies you produce, your female and your male. It's your boy. You can see right here, we got Durban Poison Junior. You want it to have be basically a roadmap of uh, sticks and branches, different girths. If you have only one girth and it's like really big, your cam can get walking issues and walk bow legged. So you want different girths, small one here, thicker here, uh, different texture here, so we can work on this uh, hand strength and grip. You want an area where it could basically get out of view of any people or pets or whatever, and just be secluded. And you want your mister here, and when it when the mist comes out, it's gonna hit right here. It's gonna hit this clump right here, and a bunch of other areas with high foliage. They drink from the leaves, so you want the mist to hit a bunch of spots where better opportunity to drink. So we have, uh, I call it the, the Z method. We have a Z up here. And this back here is the basking branch. The basking branch is basically the highest horizontal branch where directly under the heat lamp and reach their uh, optimal core temp, then they'll go hunt and do whatever else. If your cage is too cold, they'll just huddle underneath the heat lamp. So make sure it's the right distance where it's not gonna burn it. A little trick is you know if it's too hot, if you stick your hand here under the heat lamp for a minute, about four inches, three inches above the basking branch. If within that minute, it's too hot where you have to remove your hand. That means it's 
it's too hot for the chameleon and it'll probably get a thermal burn. So I also do the Z in the middle area, Z at the bottom. You know, you want to have a little quote unquote gradient where it can also go down to be at the cooler temps if it wants. Basking temp is basically the temperature right under the basking branch. If you have a temp gun, I recommend you get a temp gun or you get a thermometer. When people say ambient, that means room temperature. So you want the room temperature to be between 72 to 76. I think 74 to 76 is the best temp. We just shoot the thermometer gun at the floor and that should be you know, your ambient temp. Every year you should change the, the bulb. You want to be more efficient and you don't mind paying a few hundred bucks, get yourself a UV meter, AKA the runs tester. So basically with this, it tells you how much UVB you're putting out. This is the older version. The newer ones, it shows a reading of like one through seven. I think with those, you want a reading between three and six. I gotta recheck, but yeah, don't quote me completely. But with, with this, with this UV meter, you want at least, you know, get to show 20, but you can see with the UVB of the T5, it's showing 50, 60, 49, 48. Your cam's gonna be sitting right here. So right here, it's reaching more than enough um, UVB light. LED jungle dots in the front. You can use just a regular LED light or a fluorescent light if you're doing a dual light T8 fixture where you have a T8 light and then a, you know, a fluorescent T8 bulb. It's really bright. Cams like it when it's bright and for you, it just, it's more enjoyable when you're viewing them. This produces the UVA lights that, you know, live plants need if you're gonna do live plants. So if I had only one cage or two cages, maybe four tops, you know, I would do probably live plants and fake plants. If you're gonna do live, I would get a Shuffleera, which is an umbrella plant, uh, Pothos, which is a hanging plant. Personally, I really like carnivorous plants, so you can put a Nepenthes, which is a pitcher plant, and hang down the side or get rid of any gnats and stuff like that. The real live plants, it holds humidity in better. The cons are, you know, once that soil fills up with bacteria from the poop of the chameleon or dead feeders, you know, eventually it could go septic or it could get you know nasty in there and it'll smell like sewage. It's really terrible. It becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. So you know you would have to remove the live plant, replace it. Dealing with that, with all the cans I have, too much of a headache. We use fake plants, you know, it's more sanitary, easier to upkeep, you know, I like it, and I've had, you know, no issues at all. If you want to make sure that you use fake plants, you get plastic plants, not fabric, because if you use fabric, it's just, the water is just going to saturate right through the leaves and foliage, but if you use plastic, the water droplets from the mister will just hang out on the plastic leaves so they can drink. Some people ask me, oh, should I, can I do a bioactive? I'm thinking about doing that, putting some media or whatever on the floor. My answer to that is don't do it. These are arboreal animals, AKA they live in the trees. So, you know, if they're on the floor, they really shouldn't be. Two, you know, having any kind of dirt or moss, or whatever you want to use, people want to use on the floor, it's just more things to clean. But remember, be clean, clean the paper towels every day, or clean the fecal matter daily. As for cleaning the cages, F10 and Simply Green are two really good ones. Or pick up some chlorhexidine, but there's nothing better than using a, a steamer to clean your cages. You can use those standing steamers that you use for suits. That's what I used them for before I got into chameleons. Hot steam will kill certain things that even bleach won't kill. And it gets all the nooks and crannies. You feel more uh, peace of mind that you've got everything clean. On this one, we use hot glue and zip ties. We use zip ties here too, but you see over here, we just hot glued the sticks to the cage itself. And then after that, we just zip tie the branch on. As for feeders, you can also move this over. Put your cricket bin right here. If you want your rack to be completely self-sustainable or just everything in one unit. You can still have your mister and your reservoir here. Have your feeder bin here, whether it's dubias, crickets, superworms, whatever. I'm gonna get into feeding now. So for chameleons, you can feed them crickets, dubias, you can do super worms. People say that you shouldn't feed it super worms as a staple diet because they're so high in fat. I think that you know you can supplement it into whatever you're feeding it. Super worms are the best. They're just kind of hard to find at times. Make sure you dust your crickets or any of your feeders with calcium with D3. There's more than one way to supplement your chameleon. What works for me is we just use Rapache Calcium Plus every feeding. 
It has D3, it has calcium, and a little bit of all the vitamins that the chameleon needs. Shout out to Dr. Calcium Plus. So with feeding, people are saying now, oh, feed your chameleon every other day. Feed them only five crickets. I want my chameleon to be big, buff, strong, you know, really healthy. And it ain't gonna get like that, feeding five crickets every other day. So for us, we want a minimum 10 to 20 crickets every day. So it looks something like this. Use your feeding cup, 10 to 20 crickets, you know, maybe five dubia roaches or five super worms. And then make sure you dust it. So after you put your crickets in like this, you just want the crickets or whatever feeder to be lightly coated. You don't want to go all Tony Montana with it. What about the cage? So one method is to cup it against the screen. Hit it like that. You kind of tip it and drag it. So stick on here. Another one is literally you just kind of go on top of the foliage, shake it on top, and that's it. Then they'll see when they see movement, that activates them to go into hunting mode. If you just throw the crickets in, eventually they'll just go hide in the corner. The chameleon basically doesn't see them. The last thing which is important is gut loading. You are what you eat. It's not what you think it is, so don't try it. Highlighter dust, AKA what we use to gut load. Feeder food, so we make this in-house right here. It has you know, spirulina, kelp, bee calling, alfalfa, papaya, carrots, bananas. The main thing is that you know, this keeps your insect bin so dry so you don't have much die off at all. And you can feed this to dubia roaches, superworms, crickets, really good for your cam and they love it. I've never had one bad feedback about highlighter dust. Go to highlighterchameleons.com, pick yourself up some highlighter dust. Fresh, blended weekly, it's your boy. I usually keep it really, really dry, but some of the times, you know, they would still die off. I didn't know that cricket sweat. So making sure that you have enough of the eight crates in here so that there's airflow. When it's not out here, we have a lid on it. So you can get a storage bin, put a lid on it, get a, you know, a razor blade or a utility knife, cut a rectangle hole and put a screen on top so that no flies can get in or mosquitoes get in and possibly infect your feeders. Misting schedule. So whether you're hand spraying or using automated mister, I recommend doing a heavy mist in the morning. I'd usually do basically two to five minutes for me, but you know, you can do you know two, three minutes and then two to five minutes at night before the lights go out. Midday, I might do a one minute or a two minute missing session. You want the cage to completely dry out at some point throughout the day. If it's always wet, it'll be a breeding ground for bacteria to just thrive. It mimics a naturalistic approach where in the wild of Madagascar, you know, sometimes it won't even get rain for a week. Research has shown that they get all their hydration, or most of it, overnight when the humidity goes up, they wake up, they lick the dew. You can also use a fogger, that's a naturalistic approach. Basically, if their skin looks kind of wrinkly a little bit, that means they're probably uh, under hydrated. Being a poop expert, and it's something you should be if you want to know about chameleons or be a successful breeder. In the life cycle, you want it 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Either get yourself a timer. What I recommend is getting a Wi-Fi outlet where you can control it on your phone. So, you know, set it for 12 hours on, 12 hours off. At night, you want it completely dark. If you're in an area that it gets cold enough where, you know, you feel like you need some kind of heat source, put either a standing heater near it or put a ceramic light bulb on top of it. Chameleons like a night drop at night. Now down in the 60s, so if your temp at night is in the 60s, it's perfectly fine as long as during the day, between 74 and 76 ambient room temperature. But then the basking, you want it to be 85 degrees. Yeah, so we got so we got the misting, we got the cages, we got the lights, the feeders, the gut load. It's your boy D. I like that game. So you get your, your screen cage. Uh, first thing you want to do is install the wedge and the mister onto the top. So you want to look for the front that faces forward. It doesn't have any holes in it. You see? The A side is usually the front side, but you know, say the sticker is not there, whether you bought a used cage or whatever. It looks for the side that has no uh, holes for the screws. I like to face it towards me like this. 
And since the door, if you're facing, if you're facing the cage, the door is gonna open to the right. I like putting it on the right side of the cage if you're facing it, so that it's not kind of sticking out right here. It's really preference up to you. Your side, you're looking at it. Flip it up like this. You, this is a Miss King wedge. When you buy a Miss King, these actually don't come with it. So remember to order a wedge when you're ordering a Miss King. So remember, this is the front side. So you get your wedge, Miss King wedge. You put it on the corner. You wanna make sure that it's perfectly within the, the frame so that when you screw it in, it's not gonna be sticking out and it won't screw in right. I like to put, get a Sharpie, mark where the holes are. So now you see you have Sharpie marks, a small drill bit. You wanna get all the little metal pieces out of there. And then now you put the wedge back on there. It comes with these little black screws. So now, you want to make sure a lot of people they put the wedge on the outside but when you put it on the outside one it's not as flush and if you put it on the on the top side there's like this gap right here and and you'll see in a second why you don't want that side from being flush so you're gonna get a really sharp utility knife just cut that hole out make sure there's no little wire sticking out where it could your chameleon can stick its tongue and poke it because it might injure it and not use it again. So after you put that in, put your bulkhead, comes in the Miss King right here, put that in. Some people put it up like this, but in my opinion, that does not look flush at all. So I like to put the long part facing down into the cage and then screw it in like this. Nozzle, an elbow, and then the connector, you can turn it different ways. Stick that in and then you're gonna put this aside for later. So this, at this point I've put together probably hundreds of cages so I basically don't need instructions. You technically don't need it either. I'll show you how. You want to start it off. You get the top piece connected to the back piece. The back piece is the one with no little little connectors for any doors or anything aka you want to match the C the back with the with the C on the back of the cage. Hold it kind of like this, the back to the top. Put the screw in there. Next, I like to do the sides. You can do the, either the left side or the right side. So when you're doing this, when you're putting the sides on, you want to make sure it's making an L with the top of the cage on the back. You can do either side. Make sure the letters are facing the right direction, so if it's the F, the bottom F is facing the bottom of the cage. So you put it up like this. All screwed. Remember, don't do it too tight, or it's gonna fit very odd. Now, so you wanna flip it over. Some people like to put the bottom on at this point. I don't. It's really quick, so I'll stick the other side. Make sure the, the letters are matching the right direction. So at the bottom, I see a lot of people putting it on wrong. For this, you want the letters facing in the cage, because if you look at the bottom, this is meant to be facing the floor. Kind of ugly and appealing on the eyes, so make sure the letters of the floor are facing up, and just look for the side. It doesn't have any screws in it. Sometimes you see these little metal things, so you know that's the front. Remember the letters facing in. After you put the floor in, I like to put the bottom door. This is two metal things that stick out. I'm gonna stick in one side in here. Lock it in. Door. There's a little little lip, a little ledge right here. So when you're putting this in, you can just rest it up on here. So this is your most basic setup right here. Put the cage together. You got your Mr. Installed right here. Put the floor in. Zoom Ed comes with these flat, 
flat floors like this to keep the feet are escaping proof. Stick it in like this. What's good? It's your boy Skinny P. Nothing ready to go. It's time for the fun part, the decoration. You want your cage to mimic the wild as much as possible. That being said, you want it to have basking branches where they can absorb the most heat and sunlight, foundation branches to hold those in place, and mobile branches to move around. You can use either wooden dowels or bamboo tree branches, but we pick ours up from mountain lions. You want your branches to be sized according to your chameleon's grip. Typically, you don't want the girth of your branch to be bigger than a number two pencil. So first, you want to assemble your hot glue gun. This is the way we do it. I'm going to start by making the first initial Z branches. Now what I'm doing here is measuring to make sure that the branches don't go further than the width of the cage, because even if they're a little bit too far, it'll start to push out and stretch the cage out. You can always make it shorter, so that's okay. You wanna look at the sides, make sure it's not sticking out too much. So now that they're properly aligned with the cage, make sure that your basking branch is about eight inches from the top of the screen. And with two to two and a half of them counting for the chameleon, giving them six inches of basking height. So you could go ahead and glue it right away, but I like to make it easier. We're gonna have a top Z formation and a bottom Z formation. You wanna make to pretty much cover the stick entirely so it's secure. Just wanna make sure to take your time. Bring it to the inside and do the same thing. Making sure to go completely around the stick. Often you'll be left with these sticky little strings. You want to make sure you remove all of those. You don't want that in your chameleon's mouth. So this little piece right here will be acting as a bridge to let the chameleon come from its basking branch to its UVB branch. Okay. So now that the zip ties are on and the Z is completed, you want to cut as close as you possibly can to the tip of the zip tie so it makes a smooth surface as you can see. If your cam does happen to stick its tongue out and cut itself on its zip tie, psychologically it might kind of shut down just in fear that I cut their tongue a ton and try to eat. So basically it'll result in not using their tongue at all, not eating. That concludes the basking branches. Time for the foundation. So what I'll do is I'll make an X between the bottom basking branch and the top basking branch. I left a little tip on the end. Could be a hazard to the chameleon. So all I'm gonna do, nice, tiny little to the other side. So now you have your basking branches and your foundation branches. Now we're gonna add the mobile branches. So now I'm gonna set up three branches. Now I'm adding these three branches because they're very active spot of the cage. This is the last final Z. So now it's time to add your fake plants or foliage. Uh, I'm using three different kinds right here. Little does go a long way with these because they are pretty long and thick. I cut off the two pieces closest to the outside. I cut two out to place elsewhere. And this one I will use as kind of the chameleon's hideout. Place it appropriate to the mister. Mister will spray from here, go all over here here, this area, and it'll drip down all these leaves, giving your chameleon a bunch of access to water opportunities to drink. Wrap it around with that. 
So it looks cooler and it's more sturdy. Wrap like that. These other two, what I'll do, I'll go to a different area. One side. Two. Same thing. Just to the other corner. This one the front. See as I do that, giving this area back here for the chameleon to hide out. And faces. You can walk by your chameleon's cage and either have to look for him or come to the struggle to find them. Actually a good thing having lots of hiding spaces for your chameleon. And once I have all my decor kind of set where I wanted, I should snip all the tips off. Saw how Skinny P put in the branches and the decor in the cage. I mean, you have the final rundown. You have different tiers, different gradients. Up here, you have your basking area. In the back, you have your basking branch. That's the back one right here. When he mentions the Z, a uh, connecting bridge basically can go from the basking branch to the front area where it can stand under the UVB and LED and go back and forth. He has the mid area right here. And then the lower area, I feel like it can go where it wants to cool down or it's staying a nice, a cooler part of the cage. In the middle, we'll put a Z right here. They spend a lot of time right here. When they're finished basking, a lot of times they'll go hang out in the middle area, whether it's to eat or just to hang out. Heavy foliage. You, know, you want an area where a chameleon can be completely secluded. You can, see you can hang out over here and not be seen. We have our mister in the top right corner and to the left. So basically when the mist Sprays over here. It's gonna hit foliage up here, foliage in the middle here, foliage down here. And the chameleon has an opportunity to drink. Chameleons are arboreal, aka they live in the trees. You know, you really don't need anything on the floor. All right, guys. Hey, hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you learned a thing or two. You know, we ran through everything kind of all in one, but we'll go in depth in later episodes. Mating, how to set up the Miss King itself, how the husbandry issues, how to do fecal exams and all that so stay tuned make sure you subscribe to highlighter chameleons check us out on instagram hit us up if you want to buy a cam www.highlighterchameleons.com we out here hey keep it locked we out here